Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern. And to part 9 of building this roof. Um, we've moved on a little bit, we've got a couple extra pieces of uh, cladding done. Um, this one, here, yeah, that's new. And uh, I'm busily working on the centre section there, which will finish that off. And I've had some really fantastic feedback from you guys with this uh, mini project. Well, saying it's a mini project, it's probably one of the biggest projects I've ever done here at the Northeastern. But yeah, so this is where we are. A couple of questions I've had regarding the painting and the scribing of the card. Firstly, um, does the ink bleed through when you paint it? Um, not particularly, no. Um, if you use a good quality pen and let the ink dry a little bit before applying the paint, it should not bleed through. But you might need to give it a second coat but I'm only putting one coat on this because I want to see the lines partially uh, as it were so that hopefully answers that question now if you wanted the lines to bleed through I would use a black pen and put the paint on very thinly but uh, as you can see I'm just applying a good amount of paint just enough to filtrate into the lines and when it dries the lines will just um, eventually come through but not bleed through so yeah a good quality pen is needed for for that so this piece card um, goes in between the two pieces of card that are already fitted on the roof in between the tie-ins and uh, this is not a straight piece of card it's curved to fit in between the tie-ins uh, as you can see it's not straight it's, you can see the curve I don't know. yeah you can it is not straight at all So once this is done, it's only the tiled pieces left of card to do. Now, coming across some photographs yet again of Sow Shields. Um, it was originally glazed at the top apex. Um, but most of the photographs I've seen from the 1950s and onwards does not show any glazing at all uh, right at the top of the apex so this has created a, another dilemma should I do it or not well most of the station is built in the period of the 1950s and 60s apart from the front of course um, with the clock tower remaining um, after the war but as we know that was bombed and gone and I think that's what happened to the glazing that was in the apex um, of the roof originally it was blasted out and never replaced um, so what I'm going to do or what I intend to do is leave the top apex open and uh, just glaze the center section like we keep seeing in the photographs in this photograph you can clearly see the glazing right on the top apex and this photograph was taken before the wall because the clock tower is still there Later photographs show this gone 
and the glazing in here on. As clearly seen in this photograph here, there's no glazing and you would have been able to have seen the clock tower because it was a quite prominent feature of the station so you would have seen it from this advantage point. Right, I think that fits quite well. Um, lines up with both edges, top and bottom, top and bottom. And the lip is roughly about the same along there. So I'm quite happy with that. So the next thing to do is to do some more scoring or scribing. But first of all, I've got to mark out all these lines on here and on here so it matches up. Just like so. Now, because it's a curve, I'm going to have to score that all freehand, so that might take some time. So, we shall see when we shall see it. So, in order to get these lines to marry up with these lines, um, we know it's a curve and we can't use a rule as such. So what I'm doing is, I'm using my finger, this here, as a guide. Starting off there, I'm just scoring the line with my pencil. And hopefully, come back up from there. And then they meet up again. And then we get the parallel lines. Well, they're not parallel, they're, they're curved, but you, you, you get my, my meaning, so we'll do that again. We'll just start from that point there. And then just finger gauge all the way along. And then just at the last bit, start up from that end. And where they meet up, they blend in. Just like so. I've decided to take a little break from the roof for a minute or three while I uh, make some guttering up because obviously where that big roof meets the walls uh, in a few places I'm going to need some guttering made so what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting some 1mm card by 3.5mm in the width and um, super gluing some 2mm rod to it to make guttering. So what I'll do is I'll paint that red and then glue that to the wall as you will see later on in the video. If you look at the end it's slightly up so the, the rod end is almost flush to the top and that just brings it out off the wall to allow the rainwater to fall into it. I have just given the tiles on this side its first coat of semi matte grey 364 and as you can see I've got a lot of ink bleed at the moment. Um, obviously it's a very porous card and um, I'm not too worried about it because um, I've got a second coat to put on. Uh, this was Metcalf tiling 
and that had two coats on. Um, but with this one I used a black pen rather than a blue. So as you can see I've got a lot of blue coming through. But uh, like I said I'm not too worried about that because the second coat will cover most of that and then we'll give it a coat of black and then wipe it off and we should end up with similar tiles to these. Um, as for the other side I haven't started the tiling yet. But yeah, I thought I'd uh, quickly show you that. Oh, and the first gut has gone up. I have now added a second coat of grey paint to the tiles here. And uh, I think I will leave the weathering for the next video. Hopefully when the other side has caught up, because I've only just started to scribe the tiles. Um, I have plastic strip on order, ready for the glazing. And uh, that will probably be the next step as well, to get the glazing in on this centre panel here. But for now, that's all from me. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, and um, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.